welcome to ashok it my name is raghu in this session we are going to discuss top 20 microservice interview questions let's start the session the first one what is microservice architecture this architecture is actually used to develop the complex applications and we can also call it high scale applications converting a big application into small services and which can be developed and deployed independently this supports even those small services can communicate with each other using APIs. It is a modular and decoupled architecture. Question 2. What are the benefits of using microservice architecture? We have multiple benefits. First one, scalability. You can also called horizontal scaling and vertical scaling. Scale up, scale down or scale in, scale out. Resilience, reducing the cascading failure. Flexibility and faster development cycles. Easy to maintain because of this are independent and modularized. Explain solid principles. One of the mostly asked questions. Solid actually full form. S stands for single responsibility principle. Here we have to define one class or one REST controller that is going to handle only one type of operation. All employee operations, one REST controller. All product operations, one REST controller. Like we have to define individual classes. Those will perform their specific operations to that module. Open closed principles. Here we have to define the software entities means our classes. We can extend them by creating a subclasses but we should not allow them to modify. Lisco substitution principle, it says if you have superclass and subclass, superclass reference can also hold subclass object. This is a default nature in Java even. Okay, but here whenever you have a method parameter of super type, we should be able to pass subclass object. That should not break the behavior of the application. Interface segregation principle, don't write one interface that contains all the requirements. You divide into multiple interfaces, define four or five interface, no issue. Okay, so that can specify what are the requirements you have, those interface only use. Dependency inversion principle, okay, it says if you are using dependency mechanism, so don't use dependency type as classes, use interfaces and so that you can inject implementation classes. Generally in the layers design, we follow POGI POJO pattern, service interface and service implementation or DO interface and DO implementation that comes under dependency inversion principle. What is Spring Cloud and what are its key features? We have seen microservice actually designed to implement that Spring Cloud is used. This is built on top of Spring Boot. It is actually used for developing and deploying of microservices. The key features are nothing but service discovery and registration, load balancing, circuit breaking, distributed configuration, API gateway, and distributed trace. Question 5. What is service discovery and how it achieved actually in Spring Cloud? A discovery nothing but actually we are going to maintain all the services information so that they can communicate with each other at runtime dynamically. So Spring Cloud is actually provides a service discovery concept that is Netflix Eureka or we can also go for console. Eureka is the mostly used one even. So this one will store all the microservice informations where they are running, how many times they are running, Okay, so if they want to communicate with each other, it will provide details. So register, it allows discover the services, of course, even enables the communication between microservices. Question number six, explain the role of API gateways in microservices. There should be one entry, one exit concept for all our microservices whenever client made request. It handles dynamic routing and load balancing. When a request is made by client, it has to choose one instance that has less load factor and execute that microservice, get the response and give it back to client application. The new API gateway name is gateway and the old one is actually Joule. These are libraries used to implement API gateway mechanism. This supports even integrating with service discovery like Eureka or it supports even authentication mechanism like asking username and password or secure token. What is circuit breaking and how it is implemented using Spring Cloud? Circuit breaking is used to avoid cascading failures in microservice. For example, microservice 1 is connected to microservice 2 and that is connected to microservice 3 and so on. Suddenly, if microservice 2 is failed, 3, 4, 5 execution may get failed. So we should avoid executing of all those microservices from the failure point onwards. That is called circuit breaking breaking the execution flow in case of failure. Circuit breaking can be implemented using Netflix Hystrix or Resilience Farze. Hystrix is an old library. Resilience Farze is a new library. By using this, we can even monitor the health and we can specify how many times failure occurred. There is a concept called circuit open and circuit closed. Okay, if it is closed, allow execution of microservices. Open means don't allow. So the final meaning of circuit breaking is actually maintain the stable system. Okay, instead of making all exceptions and issues, 
just keep it in a stable form. What is load balancing and how it is handled in microservices? If you have a service that is running at multiple times, if a client made request multiple times, that should be distributed to all the services equally. That is actually distribution of client request. Spring Cloud actually supports load balancing concept like Netflix ribbon or load balancer. Ribbon is a legacy one. Okay, cloud load balancer is a latest. You can also call this is actually client side load balancer. Your client means another microservice which is making request. So we can handle the distribution of load. Okay, we need not to do any manual configuration here. This auto configure. Question number nine. What are the tools used to aggregate microservice log file? There will be multiple microservices which are running at multiple locations. We can use ELK stack, one of the famous combination. Here, ELK stands for Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Logstash is actually responsible for collecting and parsing the log. Elasticsearch is actually for storing and indexing the log. Kibana is actually UI, an interface. There you can search some by using some query patterns. What are the logs are actually their errors? messages all types and we have even splunk that is also for searching monitoring analyzing okay and even fluentd that is also open source that aggregates logs from the different locations elk is the most used combination in case of spring cloud this distributed tracing and how it is implemented in spring cloud if multiple microservices are executed for a request i just want to know what is the path that they are executed and how many they're executed. It's a technique to track and monitor the request flow through multiple microservices. It's actually implemented using a tracking systems like Zipkin, Zipkin server and Zipkin client. Sleuth is actually one which collects all the microservice execution paths and send it to Zipkin server with the help of Zipkin client. So if multiple microservices are executed for a request, how they are executed in the what order, how much time taken, I want to find it for that distributed tracing is what is the purpose of spring cloud config and how it works it's actually centralizing of configuration properties for microservices okay if you have a common property for all multiple services then you can use this spring cloud config mechanism this even supports version controlling for the configuration process okay even they can retrieve manage at runtime that is called dynamic and centralized configuration we can provide what are the different types of cloud config i want to configure this how can we do we can use a local file system a properties file or yaml file this is generally used for testing purpose git, that means git vendors like github gitlab bitbucket you can use this is one of the most used concept for version controlling and managing of the configurations we can use hashicorp vault this is generally for securing the properties like password tokens access keys okay where we can access them by using authentication and authorization mechanism question number 13 what are the different approaches for intra-service communication in microservice one of the most last question if one microservice wants to communicate with another microservice then we are going for an intra-service concept okay we can use http rest apis okay that is rest templates web clients we can use asynchronous message also can be done by using RabbitNQ or kafka we can do event driven communication by using pub sub concepts or event bus what is service orchestration and service choreography in microservices this question is related to sega pattern this is mainly for distributed transaction manager service orchestration is a pattern it says everything is controlled by one component there is a centralized approach orchestrator will be there it says everything all microservice follow okay so it actually coordinates and says how the microservice paths and execution flow should be controlled choreography says no no con concentrating of centralized approach directly every microservice that will be collaborated with other microservices without any central controller based on the patterns and designs required orchestrator maintains everything a single controller where choreography says okay we can implement in a flexible and individual manner what is the role of containers and container orchestration platforms this is also one of the most last question here container nothing but actually we are actually packing our microservice with all dependencies these are actually lightweight and portable environment here environment means you can run your application wherever you want. It can be Linux machine, Mac machine, Windows machine, on-premises, cloud environment. Easy to run the application mainly. This is actually consistent across different environments. Orchestrator platforms are there, Kubernetes or Docker Swarm. Okay, mostly Kubernetes is used. That is to automate and manage the containers at scaling. This is to deploy, scale, discover, load balance, fault tolerance in distributed environment, mainly well suitable for microservice architecture. Question number 16, explain the concept of event-driven architecture and how Spring Cloud supports it. This event-driven architecture is actually 
to connect microservice communication in asynchronous manner okay for that we can use a concept of message queues rabbit mq or kafka in asynchronous programming or we can use a spring cloud stream a spring cloud bus concept to implement this event driven patterns we can also use a mechanism of publish and subscribe to the events okay that supports loose coupling and scalability of the system question number seven what are the challenges consideration for testing a microservice first and complication issues maintaining test data if you want to test a microservice lot of test data and setup is required orchestrating test environments and ensuring the proper isolation handling the dependent creating the test environment and running them and keeping them independent is a complicated task. designing effective end-to-end -end test cases selecting appropriate testing frameworks even covering the test cases with a distributed mechanism okay there is a rule minimum 80 percent should be covered some organizations will make 90 some organizations make 75 percent of test coverages these are very complicated and challenges tasks to do testing how can we handle authentication in microservice application spring cloud pro provides different types of mechanisms to handle the security there are concepts like spring security OAuth 2 that is called open authorization, JSON web tokens, JWT. Like OAuth 2, you can even implement your own uh, resource providers, or else you can use login with a Facebook, login with a GitHub, GitHub, login with a Google. By using this, we can implement authentication and authorization concept mainly to secure our REST endpoints. Who can access what? That is actually defining the role throughout multiple microservices applications here we have. What is the role of centralized logging microservice and how it can be achieved? Okay, centralized logging, we can be handled in different services. We can gather the logs for troubleshooting and monitoring the purpose here. Okay, so we can use ELK even for distributed. Of course, as Splunk also we can go for centralizing the manner for observing what are the logs files are generated and for searching question number 20 how does spring cloud handle services versioning and compatibility there is no direct approach in spring cloud okay but we can handle them by using a standard api design semantic versioning backward compatibility support and maintaining api contracts you can use spring cloud contract that can verify the compatibility between service versions okay in case of consumer driven contracts we have and we can even use api gateways and service registration that can manage and route to a different versions of services based on the compatibility thank you for watching this video please subscribe our channel for more videos